So if you're a Linux user who wants to get into the wonderful game that is Halo Infinite, uh, kind of kind of a joke because <laughs> I, I am not having much fun with Halo Infinite, but that's beyond the point, uh, then you probably have gone the route of a virtual uh, machine that can use a virtual uh, GPU solution to pass on through. You might have struggled with getting everything working because Halo does do a few checks and has some frustrations about it, about getting it to work. Um, however, I've been working a little bit on it myself, and good news is I've actually been able to make an entire little uh, comment in this Reddit post, which I will be linking in the description below, in order to help users get their game going. Now, this is not guaranteed to work for everyone, and this is under certain specific conditions. Uh, in my particular case, I am working with a... Uh, Manjaro installation with 24 gigs of memory, a Ryzen 5 2600 on a Gigabyte X470 Aeros gaming motherboard, uh, and an AMD RX 480 for my host GPU. That is not everything though, because if we switch over here and change my lights, uh, I actually also have a second GPU, which is the NVIDIA Quadro T600. Never mind the mobile part, it is actually a PCI card. Uh, PCIe, that is, and it's in the machine, and it is set up to work in VFIO using libvirt and QMU KVM. Um, I've done a little bit of work in fighting and everything, uh, but in particular, I'm using the i440FX chipset instead of the uh, original Q35 uh, version uh, 6.5 chipset that was uh, set up in a different... VM, I believe. Yeah, don't, or 6.1 rather. Don't use the 6.1 instead. You can just use uh, PCI i440 for the chipset. You might also consider doing um, some CPU pinning. The pertinent details for me, I did have to apply a vendor ID, even though I have a Quadro card, and even though it's driver version 496 for NVIDIA's uh, driver set. I still had to apply the vendor ID or else it doesn't boot with the GPU correctly. It causes the same for code 43 error. Um, also have hidden state on for the KVM and most importantly, or maybe not so importantly, but it applied to me. I turned on SSM state on uh, and a lot of this is thanks to some of the people here in the comments on this Reddit thread, but we're actually gonna showcase it right now, uh, getting it all working. Let's close that part, and we'll just go ahead, get the desktop all cleaned up here and ready to go. Um, I do also have uh, Looking Glass shared memory enabled. So now it's just a matter of powering it up. That's the wrong one. This is why you shouldn't have more prompts than one at a time. Okay, proper one with the i440 chipset. Switch back over now. So there's Tiano Core. It will probably have a goof with the setup, so I may have to do some minor editing and open shot to get this cleaned up. But it is loading up a little bit. There it is. Should give us the different output. I don't know why it has changed color depths and um, whatnot. Uh, gonna have my other USB devices here set up to get things going. Come on. Punch in the numbers. And we're in big red. <laughs> um, and we'll give it just a second to load up my uh, startup programs here, including Looking Glass. That's the important part. We're just going to go ahead and switch back to Manjaro, however. So that way I can open the terminal and open the Looking Glass client. Failed to connect to Spice server. That is an interesting error, and that could be my own fault for not including that. Boy, I'm having some problems. Hold on. Okay. Simply adding Display Spice can hopefully fix things tremendously. Uh, now, we will boot it up one more time here. All right, it kicks on and automatically assigns the port. We'll skip right to it actually being booted up. 
Okay, big red. We can switch back over and we should be able to get Looking Glass to connect this time. What is going on here? And hey, there we are. Just like that. We'll close out of Discord. Uh, and what we'll do now is just do a quick full screen. So, yeah, just so you know, it is running with Looking Glass, and I go to allow it to capture my input. Nice and like that. Now we can load up Steam here. Go to Halo Infinite. I did also have to add uh, the T600 to a config file for it to actually see the device. But here we go. There's your logo. Um, I'm not getting sound because unfortunately uh, I don't have Scream or anything set up, so... There's your sound. There's a little bit of hitching, but it's nothing unreasonable. It's nothing unplayable. The important part is that it works, which is really the important part. It loads up just like that. We do need to get signed in here. All right, now we're signed in and ready to go. Uh, it wants all the extra settings and nonsense. I've already got saved, or at least I should have saved. Turn off blur, turn off speed lines. And here we have our uh, built-in, or rather, <laughs> uh, looking glass running. Um, I am not running with uh, any audio again through Scream, so nothing like that is configured yet. Um, I'm also not using my microphone because, uh, well, <laughs> not the microphone built in, but eh, that's just editing things later on in the future. Uh, can't skip anything with this, unfortunately, so we have to wait for the whole video to go on through. But I'm going to get this position just right, set my uh, device down, and we're going to go through a session playing a bot match in Halo Infinite on... A virtual machine here. So it actually took a really long time to load, and I'm not sure exactly why, but hey. It did finally get loaded. Uh, I just had to like tap a few places that kicked in the loading, I guess, of the disk. Maybe it's going to sleep. That could be something. I may need to do more research on what's going on with the VM. But, hey, forward unto dawn, man. We are just about here. Perchance to dream, I dream that one of these days this game's going to work. And here we go. No sound. Uh, I'm not playing with sound right now, so we're just going to go with it. But, uh, ooh, my sensitivity is... Ooh, am I capturing correctly? I am. I just have a really low sensitivity. I don't know why that is. Uh, boy, this is going to be interesting. Okay, well, no, here they are. Uh, okay, I've been hit. Let's move here. You know what? Let's increase my sensitivity. No, it's at the max, and it is not capturing it very well. It could be a difference of absolute versus relative. Let's actually awesome. switch monitors. Drop wall there is something interesting going on with the way this is performing because it's just not doing it the right way. Mice tend to have an issue with the VMs. I may need to double check what's going on with that, but I mean from a game perspective, um, I've switched inputs, so now I'm looking at it directly. I can't tell how it's performing in terms of the uh, 
display in Looking Glass, but at least from my experience, it's looking just fine by me. Well, it's very difficult to play with uh, the way that this mouse is performing. Stronghold Charlie is ours. Cinder shot inbound. Oh, we're almost out of ammo, Spark. You better be lining up these bots. They're bots after all. Cinder shot available. We captured Bravo. Stronghold Alpha lost. And you know what? I think that's perfectly satisfactory. So, if you have been having any problems getting Halo Infinite to run on your virtual machine uh, to play some good old Halo Infinite, whether it be the multiplayer or your uh, like new great old campaign, you can hopefully get everything running with this solution on Reddit. I want to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been a door wedge video, and you guys have yourself a fantastic rest of your day, and I'm going to optimize some of the mouse control here and start enjoying some Halo. Thank you very much.